इकोनॉमिक्स सिक्योरिटी इज हाल मार्क आर की टू आर नेशनल सिक्योरिटी वेयर दिस हैज बीन मैंशन इन आर इम्पॉर्टेंट डॉक्यूमेंट सर दू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू नेशनल स्ट्रेटेजी आई हैव फॉर गर्टन द एग्जैक्ट नेम बट इन जनवरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू द नेशनल स्ट्रेटेजी वॉज प्रपोज बाई द पार्लियामेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान and it was a shift from the previous uh, security driven agenda of our foreign policy so it was uh, designated or it was manifested in that policy that from now on economic security shall be the uh, fundamental pursuit of our uh, national uh, uh, for the uh, economic security would be our top uh, uh, would be our top most agenda of our national interest right so who presented this security paper any Sir, idea uh, mohit peer zada presented this not mohit peer zada mr mohit mr mohit mohit mr mohit yusuf mohit yusuf yes mohit peer zada is so oh, he's not here yes that's right uh, mohit yusuf presented this okay paper. you uh, do you have any idea about nfc award yes sir uh, uh, national finance commission mm -hmm. has been articulated under the article 160 and mm -hmm. uh, president is uh, task to divide uh, in uh, president is tasked to divide the resources between the federation and the provinces current president seven. president is ad, uh, is tasked with administrating or overseeing the division of assets between federation and the provinces so uh, president actually divides the uh, uh, actually made sure that the provinces got their share from the federation so uh, present at no but i believe president has nothing to do with the nfc award sir i have uh, read it actually mm -hmm. so a president is in according to article 160 mm -hmm. president is tasked with overseeing the uh, distribution of finances between the provinces and the uh, federation so president oversee and the fi federal finance oh, minister oh. and the provincial uh, finance right. minister uh, they work Uh, jointly for the uh, for the they agree to the formula they uh, they have a uh, president signed the seventh nfc award actually so it was president that's right, a, yes. right. any on you said in your exploring uh, specific moments in history and ideas do you think that we have uh, learnt a lesson from the fall of dhaka sir i truly believe that pakistan has learned its lessons from the fall of dhaka mm -hmm. uh, the disintegration of pakistan has made it evidently clear that the state operators has some uh, some faults to it so uh, first uh, the first thing that we did after the fall of dhaka was the institution of a institution of a constitution that was 
that was agreed upon by the all fabrics of society and the and and uh, a great care was given to make the 1973 constitution more inclusive mm -hmm. and uh, to bring a table all strata of society so that was the first action that shows that we learned our lessons from the uh, fall of dhaka not only this but also uh, uh, this uh, constitution survived two martial laws and we did not repeat the mistake of 1962 or 1970 we did not abrogate this uh, 1973 constitution that was the hallmark of our federation and that underpins our federation and two successive but successes. it remained operative only for 5 years bhutto was uh, imprisoned martial law was promulgated yes sir but again uh, the 1973 constitution was not abrogated and zaul haq did not uh, impose any other did not propose any other legislation and he certainly did not uh, propose any other of his own constitution so the so this survivability of constitution display a maturity in our in our establishment as well as in our political uh, in our political elite throughout the history that shows that we have learned our lessons from the fall of dhaka okay it's it's controversial but still i i, I request my colleague to qasim said uh, can you tell me what were the uh, six points of mujibur rahman any idea sir uh, i couldn't recall six as but i have somehow uh, that mm -hmm. the uh, bangladesh Some would have its uh, his uh, its own malaysia and the constitution would make the two bodies uh, separate uh, and uh, and the future constitution would be a loose federation a confederation would be a loose federation or federation. a confederation mm -hmm. so th only that mm -hmm. much i could recall from the six points agenda of shape so what was the main reason of separation Sir, the elections were held. Two parties were, uh, I mean, uh, they merged as major parties. Then uh, why did they, there was separation? Sir, the separation was actually it was a uh, we can say that it was a trap of history that sooner or later we were supposed to fall. No, apart. no, no. That is, I mean, you are just uh, your own guesswork. one selections have been held two parties have been selected what should be the next step the for next handing step, over the government the next step should be to uh, uh, to allow the fed, uh, allow the winning party to form the government in pakistan government so <coughs> when the mujibur rahman was disallowed to uh, when he was not allowed to uh, uh, form a government at a national level that led to a serious deadlock between the eastern and the western part no, of pakistan no he Pakistan's. he did not allow what did he he wasn't allowed to form a government he was not allowed government was not handed over to him yes sir government was not handed no, over no, to, him. to yes that sir. is the main reason that is the main reason exactly so so did we have learned any lesson from that yes sir we have learned uh, the lessons from mm -hmm. that since that uh, uh, the state has not deprived of uh, deprived any winning party to form a government and uh, uh, moreover pakistan has mm -hmm. a, a successful uh, 1973 constitution that is underpinning and how and how uh, okay can you tell me something about pakistan resolution pakistan resolution when and where it was uh, the decision was taken place the resolution took pakistan resolution was uh, was taken place at lahore in at 1940 it was proposed by AK what was the date i mean? Uh, 23rd March 1940 at Minare Pakistan Lahore What was the main resolution I mean, the main the spirit of the resolution the spirit of the resolution was that that the muslims of india in the northern uh, east and in the northern west wanted their separate autonomous homeland so that was the main spirit of the resolution there was a, there should be a separate homeland for the muslims so who gave the name of pakistan who was the person who related uh, gave this country Choudhury Rahmat Ali gave so, the name Pakistan okay so any idea uh, what is meant by uh, this uh, circular debt 
Yes, sir. Circular debt is actually it is experienced in Pakistan when the uh, when the due uh, because of the line losses and because of the electricity theft and the people not paying the bills, the government is unable to generate enough funds to pay to the discos. Discos that distribute. What is the uh, rough idea? How much outstanding bill is? Sir, uh, according to the latest report, mm. the circular debt is around 2.8 percent of GDP and 2.7 trillion uh, rupees. It is around 2.7 trillion rupees. So, okay. So, any idea how to get out of this trap, circular debt? So, to get out of this trap, first of all, Pakistan must formulate a clean energy policy and mm -hmm. must use its hydrology, its, uh, its massive potential in wind energy, in solar energy. What are the reasons of circular debt? Causes kya uh, The uh, line losses mm -hmm. because of the we have a, a poor infrastructure, many of the electricity get lost. And second important reason is the electricity is uh, stolen, uh, the electricity is being stolen. And third important reason is, is that people are not paying the bills in, in most of the remote areas okay. of Pakistan where the state is not a recovery of them. And so these three any are other, I mean the major, uh, another major the major, sir, no sir, I... Do you have an idea, have you ever heard about the capacity charges? Capacity payments, capacity charges. No, sir, I have not. I that is the sir. main thing because you have to pay them the money even if you are not using the electricity. Exactly, exactly, sir. So exactly. that is the exactly. main exactly. thing. Exactly. So once I am asking for solutions, in fact, you have to base your solutions on the causes. Exactly. So that's the thing. Then you have uh, of optional subject Punjabi. When we say, uh, who wrote this uh, these lines? Sir? He wrote the Jogiya Chut Bolne, Kaun Rukte, Rukte Yar Manandai. He wrote the Jogiya Chut Bolne, these lines were written in it. Okay. So, what are the main duties of an excise and taxation officer? Sir, the main duties of excise and taxation officer is to generate resources, mm -hmm. uh, is, to, is to collect the revenue, is to, uh, is to collect the taxes uh, is to collect the taxes on the on the houses or mm. on the lands and also to maintain the registration numbers uh, also mm. to give the registration number to motor vehicles mm. and also to gather taxes on the motor vehicles that we have mm. annual taxes or some are the, uh, 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 once in a lifetime taxes these taxes are oh. collected by the excise and taxation officer have you ever heard this satluj uh, inter environmental network a project to be shuru ki hai karne wale hain satluj punjab government ha satluj environmental satluj inter environmental network no sir i have not ye lines ko wo mukhtalif shehron ko connect karne lage hain ye so motorway ke sath na that is the latest okay thank you uh, you've done your mphil in uh, international relations yes sir so which uh, did you write any dissertation or a thesis? Yes, sir. Uh, so the what, top, what topic of my thesis was uh, Impact of Terrorism on Pakistan-India Relations from Mumbai Attacks to Present. So that was my dissertation. Okay, that's on uh, India-Pakistan relations. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Uh, you must have read about the Second World War and the First World War also. So, can you just list at least three major mistakes made during the Second World War by various protagonists? Sir, the, uh, actually the mistake, uh, mistakes lied in history that Versailles Treaty was one of the biggest... Second mistakes. World War. Yes, uh, the, the Second World War, Versailles Treaty was the reason behind the Second World War, but the other reasons is that countries failed to adopt uh, to strengthen the League of Nations and they failed to check the... No, no, you're talking, I'm talking about mistakes made during the Second World War. So, during World the War has started, so League of Nations is dead and also Treaty yes, of Versailles has failed. The appeasement policy of the Britain was the first mistake. The second mistake was the Holocaust of the, uh, that was uh, carried out by the Germany. And the third mistake was to allow the Russia to penetrate so far in the Europe by the Western countries. So I believe these three are the greatest mistakes of the Second World War. Okay. Uh, now Nuremberg trials. 
Yes, sir. I want you to just stretch your imagination a little bit and compare the Nuremberg trials with the trials of the collaborators which were carried out in Bangladesh. Are you aware of these yes, sir, trials of the I am, collaborators? I am aware of both trials, sir. Right. So, yes. what, are, what are the commonalities and what are the differences? Sir, the commonalities include that both were the uh, war crimes and they were actually carried out to punish the uh, perpetrators of okay, let's, the let's crimes against let's humanity. But but what, what was the legality of the Nuremberg sir, trial the court? The legality of the Nuremberg trial was actually that they have uh, carried out uh, crimes against humanity. So, that was the legality. So no, no, uh, illegality I am talking about. What was the illegality? Illegality, of yes. Sir, illegality of the Nuremberg trial was that that uh, it was it was carried out by the winning power and not the German courts. So, if the crimes crimes against humanity has been taken place, they must have taken place in the German courts, and the German judiciary must have punished those perpetrators. And in the Bangladesh Bangladesh uh, court uh, Bangladeshi trials. The, that Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto actually agreed on the principle that uh, no one would be tried for uh, the so atrocities. Where, where and when did they agree? Can they, you tell me where did this agreement take place? Sir, it Mujibur was a, actually Bhutto. a non-formal agreement. Where, where, when? Uh, sir, at the summit of 1974, no, there, was no such, there was no such agreement there. It wasn't. No. I actually uh, heard. Uh, I actually uh, heard the speech of. Uh, I actually heard the uh, read the newspaper article about the Zulfikar Ali Bhutto speech, and he said that the Bangladesh should not. Uh, no, Bhutto uh, can say whatever he wants to. He can say that Bangladesh should send the entire reserves in their state bank to Pakistan. That anybody can say that. But was there an agreement which you said? Sorry, sir, I do not know about that particular agreement. Do, do you know that the law under which the, the Nuremberg trials were held was designed much before the crime, uh, after the crimes which were committed? So, is there a possibility of a law to be applied retrospectively? No, sir, it is, uh, there is no possibility of applying the laws in so, a retrospective So, that, that is the illegality in the Nuremberg yes, trials. Yes, exactly, exactly. And exactly. in the case of Bangladesh, do you know of anybody who was tried and then executed? Mullah Qadir, no. sir, was tried and executed. Why was he tried and why was he executed? Sir, he was tried because of his connection with Al-Badr. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a f uh, he was a freelancer and not a part of. And the what was Al Badr and Al Shams? Al Badr and Al Shams were actually non-state actors, and they were Islamist political parties who took up uh, weapons to to fight the. Where, where, did, where did they get the weapons and all? Sir, uh, <laughs> they uh, got all the support they needed from Pakistan's uh, national armies, Pakistan security apparatus. So they were the auxiliaries. Uh, yes, sir, auxiliaries, but non state auxiliaries. Chale, let's uh, leave this uh, for the time being. Uh, United Nations. Yes, sir. Do you think it is irrelevant nowadays? It's not doing anything for peace and security. No, sir, I do not consider United Nations to be irrelevant. It is true that security council and the and the veto power of the five greatest uh, greater nations have caused the united nations to be paralyzed but if we think about all the good deeds that the united nation is doing in serving the humanity in in contacting the all of the all of the freedom movements or all kind of social movements and all kind of social upheavals united nation is at forefront uh, confronting all the uh, all the ills of the present day society for example it is fighting can you can you tell me uh, about any freedom movement of today which is being you know prom promoted by the united nations the palestinian uh, plo or palestinian so how, how, how is the united nations promoting 
United Nation has offered its seat to the uh, Palestinian Lib Liberation Organization and it is one of PLO is one of the member of United Nations General Assembly. PLO? PLO. Uh, Palestine is actually. Palestine. Palestine. Yeah, but how is it helping the, uh, the, the freedom for Palestine Sir, or the establishment of an independent Palestinian state? Sir, uh, the, uh, the permanent settlement of Palestine would definitely come from the resolution of United Security Council if all the members would agree on that resolution. But United Nations is providing a platform to address the issue of uh, Palesti uh, Palestinian cause and also to raise the uh, issues that address the issues uh, issues of uh, Israel brutality on the Gaza and United Nations uh, General Assembly again and again condemned the. No, but what I'm saying is the irrelevance of the United Nations comes from the fact that you come and say whatever it is and nothing happens. Sir, it is true, so, but it, it is almost very difficult. So, what kind of a clout does uh, the UN have? Sir, UN uh, has transcended actually its purpose somehow. B and now it has shifted from maintaining peace to helping the humanity in achieving uh, other goals to, uh, in combating the AIDS, in combating the pandemics, uh, in maintaining the climate. Uh, in 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 bringing out the gender equality, so it has been. Although it has failed in political domain, but it has. Uh, so okay, my my last question. You mentioned about Jodi Ramatali. Yes, sir. A great hero of Pakistan. Yes, sir. A K Fazlul Haq presented the uh, resolution. Yes, sir. Where did they disappear after independence? What happened to Chaudhry Ramatali? Sir, Chaudhry Ramatali actually presented the paper now and never. And if we see the Pak, if we, if no, we, no, ma'am, baad ki baad karo. Yes, after sir. 1940. The, sir, the Pakistani maps that he displayed in that now and never pamphlets showed the exact uh, depiction of his mind that what kind of Pakistan he actually envisioned. But the truncated Pakistan when we. Uh, got the uh, independence and the truncated Pakistan made made him so much angry. So he protested against the policies of uh, Qaeda Azam, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and the Liaquat Ali Khan. So he was forced to leave the country, or some some says that he actually went to self-imposed exile in uh, in Britain, and now he is buried, uh, and then he died there around 1950s. And, and uh, what about A.K. Fazlul Haq? A.K. Fazlul Haq was uh, declared traitor of the. Uh, so new found state, so he went. Know, why back why do such things happen that you are a hero one day and then you are a traitor the next? Sir, yes, this is this is a dilemma that we are witnessing here because of uh, many factors that involve because of the attitudes that is the good that Thank is you. prevailing within the G, You have uh, your research paper on terrorism in that specified area. When did India use the word the terrorist state for Pakistan? Sir, I, I, I am sorry, I do not know the exact time when India first. Died. Okay, when this phenomena right started happening between India and Pakistan, then India started sponsoring Pakistan as a terrorist state. Sir, it started after Pakistan supported the Kashmiri Mujahideen in the 1990s that India started Pakistan calling a terrorist state. Okay. And now you have, uh, what happened in Gurdaspur attack? Who was responsible? I am sorry, sir. I, I do not. You, st you have given me the specified era that from uh, I wrote the Mumbai to Pulwama to present, sir. Actually, but I wrote uh, I wrote this piece uh, in 2018, so I couldn't recall all the events that I have actually written in my research paper. Any idea about Uri incidents? Sir, uh, in Uri uh, incident, actually some uh, terrorist attack. What happened? Where? When? Sir, Uri attacks uh, occurred in 2016. 
Mm-hmm. And after that, uh, Uri attacks. How many attacks occurred in 2016? There was also another major terrorist attack. Sir, there was Gurdaspur attack, uh, and these two attacks were occurred in 2016. It was. It was not Gurdaspur. Uh, okay. Now let's relate it with the other terrorist activities from the history. Uh, from the history, now let me ask the question. What do you know about Khalistan movement? Sir, Khalistan movement was actually a nationalist separatist movement uh, resident uh, in the province of the Punjab and the Punjabi uh, nationalists tried to separate from the state of uh, federation of India and uh, it, uh, it was centered around the uh, that golden temple and it started from there and that led to the blue star operation. So that is the Khalistan movement that Sikh wanted a separate homeland for themselves. When did this movement begin? And so has, it, it, has it come to an end? Uh, this movement began in the early years of 1980s, being the Blue Star Operation being carried around to, uh, 1984. Uh, and no, this movement has not died yet because the Akali Dal also, also has some of the elements that are uh, extremely radicalist also supports the Khalistan. Or, uh, but most of the Sikh, di- uh, Sikh diaspora in Canada and England uh, is uh, continuously sparkling the okay. issue of Khalistan again and again. Okay, if you remember Blue Star operation, then do you also remember the brass tack operation or brass tack exercises? Sir, I know that they occurred after Blue Star operation, but I do not know about the particular details. All right. In which year Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi was murdered? Or, uh, I guess he was murdered. Sir, uh, I think he was murdered in, uh, in 1991. What about Indira Gandhi? When did? She was murdered in 1984. 1984. Okay, now the last question is, right, from, uh, do you know something about Hafiz Jalandri? Because today is his death anniversary. Yes, sir, he was, uh, he was the writer of our national anthem. Uh, he wrote Park Sir Zami in Shark Bar. What else you know about, about him? Any other contribution by Afija Randri? No, sir, I do not know any. A famous poem? No, sir, I do not know about any other of his poems. Okay. Shahnama Islam? Shahnama Islam? Yeah. Yes, sir. And now I am a young man, and he has written it. So, this Please recite national anthem. Should I stand, sir? You should tell. Pak sir zameen shat baat kishwar e haseen shat baat Tu nishan e azm e ali shan azm e pakistan Merkaz e yakin shat baat I could recall that, my sir. Very good. Abhi aapke mehna. Kasim, abhi end mein aapke mun pe smile aai hai. Aapka level of information, I must say, it's very good. Thik hai na? Lekin thoda sa, zara smile bhi de diya kare. <laughs> Pleasant thi. Yes. Thik hai na? Level of information, baad achcha hai. Personality aapki, mashallah, baad achchi hai. You can speak well. Obviously, har kisi ko har sawal ka jawab nahi hota. Thik hai na? और डिफरेंट जाहिर पूछते हैं लेकिन कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल आपका बहुत अच्छा है एक तो चीजों में जैसे एनएफसी अवार्ड है आप प्रेसिडेंट पे इंसिस्ट करते रहे हालांकि प्रेसिडेंट का कुछ वो उसमें कंट्रीब्यूशन नहीं होता ये प्रोविंसेस ने फेडरेशन के साथ बैठ के डिसाइड करना होता है कि उनकी पॉपुलेशन कितनी है एरिया कितना है उसके बेसिस पे एक फार्मूला बनता है तो वो बस उसके डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होती है एनीहाउ गुड एंड विश यू बेस्ट ऑफ लक Yes, this sir. is Thank what I can so say. Thank you so much. Uh, I have almost the same observations. I think you can speak well, you can articulate the ideas, and you have a pretty good uh, level of information. But again, I would say, since it's a competitive exam, there's no end to that. So you you work to be uh, to be at the top of the uh, I mean group. So keep on working hard. اس میں زیادہ زیادہ انفرمیشن لاجیکلی اور یہ وہ تو اس میں دیکھ لیں ڈیوٹیز آف این ای ٹیو کیا ہے وٹ آر دا پرنچل ٹیکسیز بھی دیکھ لیں پھر اس کے بعد یہ جو ایک ایسی کی ڈیوٹیز ہیں کیا کام ہیں 
قسمہ ہو گئے ہیں پھر لیٹیسٹ یہ جو ڈیویلمنٹس ہیں تو ان کو دیکھ لے and I wish you good luck you are a good candidate thank you جی میں جو یہ ڈویڈ پہ آئے ہیں یہاں سمٹائمز you would realize one of the panel members or some they would like to provoke you by you know making a a pre-postural statement اس میں آپ نے انرب نہیں ہونے you maintain your cool دو تین چیزیں you know you have information that's good but try not to just hang on to one part of the information جیسے ایک question پہلا آپ کے اب تھا کہ reasons for lessons learned fall of Dhaka you went on to the constitution 73 constitution and itna ziyada aap ne usko kiya ke you couldn't go to the second point at all thik hai na to thik hai you know about you know the constitution and how there was a consensus built around it but but that was not all there were other things also thik hai na تو وہ تھوڑا سا خیال رکھیں the other thing is کہ آپ کے کئی دفعہ choice of words آ جاتے ہیں disintegration of Pakistan that means Pakistan ختم ہو گیا disintegrate ہو گیا وہ ٹھیک ہے وہ partition ہو گیا یا separation کیا نہیں then one you made a statement you could have been picked on that and you wouldn't have had any answer so I mean Katha ke Pakistan was destined to be you know partitioned or separated so there's nothing in this destiny as such they were the mistakes which were committed yes sir that's true sir there are there are a number of other countries which have separate provinces separated by sea or by hostile territory and they continue to remain you know I would say united countries so there was nothing as such you know کے لیے وہ پہلے سے یہ تھا تو باقی generally you are you are good the only thing is that you just have to relax and ایک آپ questions کو جو ہے نا one by one logically handle کریں I'm sure you'll do well جی please ساری observations آپ کو convey کر دی دیں گے تو history کے بارے میں بھی you have seem to have good information that you're right اور good luck okay that's all Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That's the part, please.